the list of all possible outcomes. The list of all possible outcomes are simply we can say it as list of all possible results. So if I throw the coin twice, if I throw the coin twice, let us take thrice also. If I throw if I throw the coin once, it is nothing but either head or tail. Once it is either head or he tail. Uh, if I throw the coin twice, uh, it is H H H T T H T T. It is two. You can understand it is two square. If I throw the coin thrice, uh, head 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 H H T H T H T H H T T H T H T, -H -T H T T all T's. So how many outcomes do we have here? This is four plus four, eight. It is nothing but two cube. So the base is nothing but when you conduct the experiment once, the number of outcomes are two. As many coins as you use, that goes to the power. If you are using two coins, or if you are conducting this experiment twice or if you are using two coins, that number goes to the power. This should always be the base. So this is two square. Three coins are used, two cube. Four coins are used, two power four. And five coins are used, two power five. And n coins are used, it is two power and outcomes will be there. This is important thing you have to understand. And if you take die, what should be the die? Die contains six numbers. They are nothing but one, two, three, four, five, six. So six will be there. And if I take two dice and if I throw two dice, if I throw two dice or if I throw the die twice, both are same. If I throw two dice or if I throw the die twice, then if I count the possible number of outcomes, then again, the principle of counting this is a basic thing you can understand. Principle of counting. When the die is thrown twice, there will be two outcomes. That is uh, first die, second die, or first time die thrown, second time die thrown. So this can be filled in six different ways, either one or two or three or four or five or six. And the second one also can be filled in the same way, six, one or two, or three or four or five or six it is nothing but six into six it's nothing but six a square so when two dice are thrown it is a six a square the number goes to the power like what it is one 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 two and so on one six and so on six six like this you will get totally six square outcomes. If three dice are thrown, you can understand it becomes six into six into six. It is nothing but six cube. So basing our principle of counting only, we will be doing all this thing. So you need the basic knowledge of uh, the permutations and combinations also to solve the problems related to probability. So the exhaustive events or the sample space generally it is denoted by yes. The sample space is denoted by S or the exhaustive events or the total number of outcomes is nothing but simply the list of all the possible outcomes. Like if you take the 52 cards, playing cards, then how many outcomes will be there in 52 cards? 52 will be there. If two such pack of cards are taken, then you're mixing it up then how many will be there then you think of it like that so without knowing the total number of outcomes the problem cannot be solved understand that so what are the terms we have seen now random experiment mutually exclusive events equally likely events of course i have defined simple event and compound event also and then finally, which is very, very important one is uh, the sample space or the access to events uh, is nothing but the list of all possible outcomes. So if you know all these things, then we can go to the classical definition on probability. You can see that in a random experiment, if there are n number of uh, 
if in a random experiment if there are n number of mutually exclusive equally likely exhaustive events and for an event a to occur for an event a to occur if there are m number of favorable outcomes then the probability of occurrence of event a is defined to be p of a is equal to m by n which is uh, the classical definition on probability but uh, you understand this can be used under all these restrictions only what are the restrictions here just it should be a random experiment they are they must be equally likely mutually exclusive events for an event a to occur p of a is given to be m upon n which is nothing but number of favorable outcomes whole divided by total number of outcomes okay which is known to be m upon n for an event a to occur there are m favorable outcomes and the total number of outcomes are n then the for the event not to occur negation for event not to occur that is p of a bar or it can also be denoted as p of a complement both are same the total number of outcomes are n and the favorable outcomes to a are m then the, uh, the non favorable outcomes to a non favorable outcomes to a are nothing but n minus m upon n okay then if you split it it is n by n1 minus m by n that is p of a m by n is nothing but p of a now what is it p of a bar so you can understand that from this one p of a plus p of a bar is equal to 1 p of a plus p of a bar is equal to 1 that is the sum of the probabilities of occurrence and non occurrence of an event is always equal to unity understand that it will never exceed 1 that means probability will never be negative and the probability will never exceed 1 that means it always lies between 0 and 1 it is clear that because uh, the numerator is contained in the denominator numerator is contained in the denominator that is why numerator will always be less than the denominator or equal to the denominator then it will never exceed one that is why the value of probability always lies between zero and one zero less than or equal to p of a less than or equal to one okay generally this p of a is equal to zero is termed as uh, the impossible event and p of a is equal to one is said to be certain event p of a is equal to zero is an impossible event means what the event never occurs generally in the day to day life p of a is equal to 0 an impossible event means p of a is equal to 1 is certain event means we can frame the problems in such a way that the probability is 0 the probability is 1 if you take the nature if you take our all the experiment what we are performing in day to day life generally nobody will have certain event certain event like what an impossible event like if I say the sun rises in the west, then it's impossible because it is everybody knows that the sun rises in the east. If I say some boy I have taken, Rahul Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi is a girl. If I say you will not accept because it's a natural truth that he's a boy, then in such a case the probability becomes zero generally probability becomes zero probability becomes one is generally attributed to natural truths only our life always fluctuates between zero and one because if you know that you will get into IITs definitely you will never listen to my lecture you will never sit in the class if you are certain that you are going to get seat in IIT okay then in such a case what happens human life always fluctuates between zero and one this is the beauty of 
probability. Okay. Now, according to the classical definition, what we understood here, you must know the total number of outcomes, whatever the problem you take up, and uh, in that one, you must know the total number of outcomes, uh, and from this one, you have to pick out the number of favorable outcomes, you place it in the numerator, and the total number of outcomes in the denominator, and thereby you will be getting the probability of the occurrence of a certain event A. Okay, so is equal to zero is impossible event, is equal to one is a certain event, and the probability value, whenever you find out, it should never be negative, and it should never be greater than one. If you get such type of answer, which is not lying between zero and one, you, you, you make yourself sure that you have gone wrong in simplifying the problem. So its value must always lie between zero and one, either it is equal to zero or it is equal to one like that. Okay, now, after many researchers and after many correspondence between many mathematicians and all, the, the probability is given a, is given a certain shape uh, with the introduction of set theory, with the introduction of set theory, that is nothing but axiomatic approach. What is axiomatic approach? The definition, what it is given in the classical definition, that is given axioms. You might be knowing what are the axioms. Axioms are the rules or principles given by the mathematician without any proof. You have to accept. So here, axiomatic approach to define the probability. F maps. F maps. The power set of S. S is nothing but a sample space to the real number set R is said to be a probability function is said to be a probability function if it satisfies the following three axioms. What are they? Number one, axiom of positivity. What does it mean? It is given a name. Just now I discussed, what is it? The probability will never be negative. It should always lie between zero and one. That's what is named as axiom of positivity. It means P of A should always be. I can say axiom of positivity or axiom of non-negativity. You must say exactly, it should be axiom of non-negativity. Non-negativity means it will never be less than zero. So P of A should always be greater than or equal to zero. That is nothing but axiom of positivity. Number two, axiom of certainty. This is another name given for random experiment. What is a random experiment? You must know all the possible outcomes. That is, if you take the probability of the sample space, it should always be one. That means all the possible outcomes are known to us. So axiom of certainty means probability of sample space is one. In other words, it is nothing but you must know all the possible outcomes whenever an experiment is conducted. Whenever an experiment is conducted. Number three, axiom of union. What is axiom of union? P of A union B is equal to P of A union written as plus. P of B only when A and B are disjoint sets, understand. What is the meaning of disjoint set? There should be nothing common to both the sets A and B. There should be, should not, you should, we must not have anything common to both the sets A and B. Then only they are sort of disjoint sets. Like uh, if I ask you to collect the coefficients of 2 from 1 to 20. From 1 to 20, if I ask you to collect the coefficients, then it is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on up to 20. If I ask you to collect the coefficients of 3, then it is 3, 6, which is common to 2. Again, 9, next to 12, which is common to 2. Then they are not uh, disjoint sets. They are not disjoint sets. So disjoint sets are those sets that should be, uh, there should not be anything common to both the sets. Then this is said to be the axiom of union.